Hello Math1093. In this video we are going to define the sine and cosine functions. So let's write that down. Sine function, which is usually written sine of t except without the e, so sin of t. And then the cosine function, which is usually written cos of t or cosine of t. We're going to talk about how these functions can actually be defined using a measurement process. And this is a little bit different from what you may have seen in high school if you saw sine and cosine in high school. But it turns out in trigonometry, it's useful to define these functions using some kind of measurement process, which we're going to detail here. All right, so what is that measurement process? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how we define the sine of t. So for any real number t, The sine of t, so this is a definition here, the sine of t, which is written sin of t, is the y-coordinate we reach if we start at the point 1, 0 on the unit circle. You'll see there's a unit circle over to the left there and travel t units counterclockwise, that's counterclockwise, along the circle, or along the circle's circumference. Okay, so for example, suppose I wanted to find what sine of, let's say, uh, 1.2 would be. Just use that as an example. Okay, if I want to measure what sine of 1.2 would be, here's what I do. I start at the point 1, 0 on the unit circle centered at the origin. And then I travel around the circle until I've gone 1.2 units or 1.2 radii uh, worth of distance along the circle. So you'll remember from one of the previous videos that one radius was about that much. So if I do about 0.2 radii more, I'm going to end up somewhere around here. And I'm really just guessing. And I'm going to put us about there. Okay, so if I travel 1.2 units around, so that was 1.2 units on that arc, I wind up at some point, and the y-coordinate of that point, that's going to be the sine of 1.2. And in fact, it's going to turn out that we're going to define the cosine of t, or the cosine of 1.2 in this case, to be the x-coordinate of that point. So I'm going to go ahead and label that point with both coordinates, cosine of 1.2, sine of 1.2. And I'm going to go ahead and annotate this definition so I don't have to rewrite the entire thing. So the cosine of t, or cosine of t, is the x-coordinate of that point. Same point that we reach by going uh, t number of units around the unit circle counterclockwise. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, what if t is negative? Because that might happen. We might want to find the sine or cosine of a negative number. So we take this as a convention that if t is negative, then the phrase t units counterclockwise means the opposite of t units clockwise. So in other words, if I wanted to find sine of negative 1.2, I would go clockwise around the unit circle rather than counterclockwise and go clockwise by 1.2 units. Okay, so anyway, let's see if we can use this idea to figure out approximately what cosine of 1.2 and sine of 1.2 would be. Okay, I'm going to do that using this coordinate grid here. So it looks like from this picture, cosine of 1.2 is almost exactly 0.4. Now, by the way, that is based on my guessing of how far 1.2 units is. So this may be off. And then sine of 1.2 looks to be somewhere around 0.9. And I can actually use the calculator on my computer to see whether those guesses are anywhere near correct. It would be remarkable if they were correct because... Honestly, this is slightly uh, guesswork here. So cosine of 1.2 radians, according to my computer, is 0 0.362. So I actually wasn't so far off. This is, the actual value of this should be about 0 0.362. So I probably should have gone a little bit further counterclockwise. And then the sine of that angle, sine of 1.2, is going to be 0 0.932. Okay, so I was a little low there. So again, just a result of me not going quite far enough, 0 0.932. These are the actual values according to my calculator. But you'll notice that 
just this idea of measuring around the circle allowed us to get pretty close without having to use a calculator in the first place. We just used a calculator to verify. Okay, let's do one more just for, uh, just for reinforcement here. Suppose I want to find the sine and the cosine of, uh, let's say, negative 0.4. So the sine and cosine of negative 0.4. Okay, so to find those, I'm going to start again at the point 1, 0, and I'm going to travel until I think I've gone about 0.4 units clockwise. So remember, a unit is exactly this much. All right, now I actually have some guidance. If I want to mark off uh, a segment of length 0.4 units to use as a guide, uh, 0.4 units would be exactly this much, right up to 0 0.4. So I need to mark off this much distance uh, clockwise on the unit circle starting at this point. So I'm going to start here and go around... I think I'm going to need to stop around right here. I'm kind of guessing here. So I think that's going to be the key point I'm going to use here. So the cosine of negative 0.4 uh, looks like it's a little bit past 0.9, so I'm just going to say 0.9. And what's the sine going to be? The sine is going to be the y coordinate. Notice that's negative in this case. Looks like it's going to be about negative 0. I don't know, about negative 0.35 or so. That's going to be my guess. And I'm going to use the calculator to verify whether those guesses are anywhere near correct. So the cosine of negative 0.4 radians, according to my calculator, is 0.92. All right, so let's record that. And then the sine of negative 0.4 turns out that's about negative 0.39. So I wasn't so far off. In fact, I think overall a little bit better than I was last time. Okay, so anyway, that's how we measure the sine and cosine of a given number. Now, if you met the sine and cosine functions in high school, you may be thinking, wait a minute, uh, aren't sine and cosine, or aren't the, uh, the inputs of sine and cosine angle measures? Because it sounds an awful lot like what we're using as inputs here is arc length rather than angle measures. But see, the beauty of this is, Remember, when we talk about radians, we talked about that if we have a unit circle, the radian measure of an angle is the same as the arc length measured in radius length. So, for example, this, uh, this arc length we measured here, this 1.2, uh, if we were to think of this not as an arc length but as an angle, well, that angle measure is 1.2 radians because the arc that it's cutting off here is 1.2 radius length. Sorry, I'm making that sloppy, but I'm trying to highlight that arc there. Okay, so because that arc length is 1.2 units and the radius is 1 unit, that means that this angle measure here is 1.2 radians. Uh, so that's how we can interpret this value and this value as angle measures. Uh, same with this other one. If we cut off this angle here to intercept this arc, this arc that had length, what was this, uh, 0.4 units, but I'm going to call it negative since we're going clockwise, then that means this angle here, its radian measure is negative 0.4 radians. So it is correct to think of the input of these functions as angle measures and radians. And occasionally we'll think about them as angle measures and degrees, but we're going to move further and further away from that uh, for most of this course, because for calculus, we usually use radians. All right, so the purpose of this video was to define the sine function and the cosine function as results of a measurement process. And we were able, able to even estimate some actual values of this function, probably ones that you hadn't seen or memorized before, just by measuring along this circle here, clockwise or counterclockwise. In the next video, we're going to talk about what happens to these definitions if we don't have a unit circle, if we have a circle of a different radius. So stay tuned.